Gung Xingxuang, who had been Miss Gung Wu for fourteen years, never expected that one day this ranking would have to be moved back. What's even more unexpected is that the additional cousin was just the beginning. From then on, the development of the world was like a wild horse running wild, which was unpredictable and caught off guard. While all the sisters in the hall were worried about their own future, Gung Xingxuang was busy sending letters to Zhu Malinghu. Go to the book. Brother Qingma, there have been many things going on in the mansion recently, and I am really troubled. I have difficulty sleeping and eating, my clothes are getting whiter, and my face is yellow and withered. Reply. Silver Hundred Liang, you can buy food, clothing, and face cream hair cream. Gung Wu. Well, Miss Gung Lu is angry. What she wants is silver. Yes, she likes silver, but... But a few days later, I came back to the book again and said, change your name and follow your thoughts. Go to the book. Brother Ching Mo. The white spirit swan appeared at the window carrying a book on its back, with the inscription, Journey to Yuya Mountain, written on it. Gung Xing Shuang first felt happy, then a chill and shock in her heart. She gritted her teeth and cursed in a low voice. She began to reply with a sharp pen, waving her teeth and claws. She wished she could see the handsome man standing in front of her, who always had a calm and refreshing face. She wrote the three big characters, asterisk asterisk, on his face. Keywords of the novel My wife is wonderful no pop-ups, my wife is wonderful full collection download, my wife is wonderful latest chapter reading. Chapter 1 Onping Uncle Mansion You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 1 Onping Uncle Mansion When Gung Xingxuang woke up, it was already a moment after Chen had passed. She looked at the ginger yellow plain roof above in a daze, and for a moment, she couldn't distinguish whether it was a dream or reality. However, after experiencing this situation multiple times, Gung Xingxuang's rationality clearly told her that now is reality, and all the things in her dream should be considered as strange scenes in her current cognition, which is truly just a dream. Miss, you're quite awake. A woman dressed in a bean green and ochre colored skirt hurriedly walked over. She was one of the only maids by Gung Xingxuang's side, Hua Curtain. Her face was urgent, as if she had run back from outside. Didn't you wake me up again? What happened? Gung Xingxuang has already made an experience in dreaming. As long as she dreams that strange dream one night and sees a scene she has never seen in her life, nor does she have such a great imagination to imagine out of thin air, she will inevitably wake up late the next day and cannot be awakened by various sounds and movements from the outside world. She can only wake up on her own. She has gained experience, and the two maids around her have also gained experience. They didn't panic like this before, but now they are painting curtains like this, something must have happened. Sure enough, the painting curtain exclaimed in an urgent voice, Madam Uncle is going to sell half of the roll. What? Gung Xingxuang jumped up from the bed with one bone and one bone, without the need to draw curtains to serve her. She quickly put on her clothes, and her outfit was extremely pleasing to the eye. It's true. Yu Yapa from Luer Hut Ong arrived early this morning. Sister Levu, who was by Madam Uncle's side, personally led the person into the main courtyard. If it weren't for a quarter of an hour ago, Xiao's mother suddenly came to take half of the roll, and the maidservant was eager to follow her. Grape secretly told the maidservant, and the maidservant couldn't believe it. Miss, what should we do now? During the reporting period, Gung Xingxuang had already put on her clothes, finished washing, and sat in front of the dressing table. Although Hua Shuang was anxious, she skillfully and quickly tied a hanging bun for Gung Xingxuang, inserted a gilded sparrow hairpin, and brought a pair of red gold flowing bead earrings. In this short time, Gung Xingxuang has come up with a solution. Does Madam only sell half a roll, or should she also sell Ping Shan, Chen Shui, Pearl, Xianglan, Bai Ji and others? Ping Shan and Chen Shui are the maids of Gung Xingbing, the third girl in the mansion, Zhu Zhu is the maids of Gung Xingyu, the fourth girl, and Xianglan and Bai Ji are the maids of Gung Xingqin, 
the sixth girl. Due to Gung Xinyu being an illegitimate descendant, he was beheaded in the fifth generation, leaving only the last generation of Anping Bo Mansion. Despite the continuous reduction of expenses, two years ago, Lady Xia stipulated that only two attendants, including a mother in law and a maid, should be left by the illegitimate descendant, while only one attendant should be left by her side. As for the young masters, four will be left by the side of the legitimate ones, including mother. In dot law, maidservants, and servants, while two will be left by the illegitimate ones. Two years ago, there was a shortage of more than half of the servants in the uncle's mansion, which not only earned money but also reduced expenses, which was very supportive for a period of time. Gung Xingxuang is now asking the question of the painting curtain to clarify whether Madame Bo is purely targeting half a role. Or her, or whether this mansion is once again unable to support her. According to Grape, Sunken Water and Xianglan were also called to the main courtyard. Compared to the painted curtain, the half roll has a more eye dot catching appearance, while the submerged water is more beautiful than Ping Shan, and the fragrant orchid is more beautiful than Bai Ji. What is Madame doing? Thinking of that possibility, Gung Xingxuang frowned. Money could indeed repeatedly lower a person's bottom line. No wonder this time he was so anxious and secretive, not even greeting the owners of these three maids. Hua Fen had never thought of this before. Upon hearing Gung Xingxuang mention it, her face turned pale and she murmured, No wonder this time it's Yu Yapo from Luer Hut Ong, not Wang Yaren from Changning Street. Yu Yapo and Wang Yaren can be considered as famous Yapo of the generation in the north of the city, but Wang Yaren's reputation is relatively good. Yu Yapo is not very good. The people she handles, regardless of gender, if they are good and young, many are sent to that indescribable place. It is truly true that they eat people without vomiting their bones, making life worse than death. Gung Xingxuang, a young lady from the destitute mansion, and the maids around her, should not have known about this matter. But who made Gung Xingxuang start dreaming more than a year ago? Dreams taught her a lot. No, or rather, she picked up the skills she had forgotten before. She felt that the latter statement was more in line with everything she had experienced in the past year, present, and even future. Let's go to mom's place. Gung Xingxuang stood up. Their room was the eldest and legitimate son of Anping uncle's mansion. Her father, Gung Wen, was not born by uncle, but by uncle's original wife, Lady Zhou. However, her grandmother passed away less than six months after her father's birth. She currently lives with her parents in Kinkuyuan. Originally, she lived alone in a yard, but two years ago, in order to reduce expenses, all the girls living alone in the mansion moved to live in the same yard with their parents. As a result, both the manpower and money needed to take care of the yard were much less. So it can be said that the Anping Uncle Mansion does not have a courtyard, but there are many vacant courtyards, and now it is a scene of wild grass and vines climbing walls. Five Sisters As soon as Gung Xingxuang walked out of the room, he saw Gung Xingchen hurriedly running in from outside the courtyard, followed by Bai Ji. Sister Wu, it's not good anymore. My grandmother is going to sell fragrant orchids, half a roll, and submerged water. I went to beg my grandmother, but she didn't see me. Sister Wu, what should I do? Gung Xingqin is one year younger than Gung Xingxuang. In fact, it is only a few months younger. Now it is the fourteenth year of Xingning in the reign of Daining. Gung Xingxuang was born in the December of the second year of Xingning. Su Su was fourteen years old, just in the prime of his life. Gung Xingqin was born in March of the next year. The sisters are similar in age and temperament and have always had a good relationship. Now that such a thing happened, the first thing that Gung Xingqin thought of was Gung Xingxuang. I already know about this, sixth sister. Grandma won't see you. Have you gone to beg third auntie? Gung Xingxuang walked towards his mother Ruan's main house and asked Gung Xingqin. I went to beg, but my mother said my grandmother said that after selling the fragrant orchid, if I feel that Bai Ji is not enough to serve alone, I can buy another one. I don't understand. 
Is there any difference between selling one and buying another? Did Xianlan make something wrong, but the half roll in your house, Sister 5, and the submerged water in Sister 3's house will also be taken away? Did the three of them make something wrong together? Gung Xingqin followed closely beside Gung Xingxuang, making a murmur in his heart. He also murmured this, but before Gung Xingxuang could respond, the two had already arrived at Ruan's room. Ruan naturally woke up long ago and even used breakfast. For Gung Xingxuang, every once in a while, there was a day when she slept very soundly and couldn't even wake up. Ruan Xie also went from being panicked at the beginning and even hiring a doctor for it, to being told by his wife that she didn't know the cost of oil and rice, to being calm and waiting for her to wake up naturally. Mother. Wen Yangin. Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin entered the door to salute. Ruan put down the embroidery work in her hand, and Gung Xingxuang glanced at the clothes on the desk, then at her mother's face. Mom, did you stay up late again last night? No, I fell asleep at the beginning of the year, replied Ruan reflexively. Gung Xingxuang was so angry that she couldn't change her expression when she saw her mother lying now. Before she could say anything more, Ruan Xie had already looked at Gung Xingqin. The stars are also here. Gung Xingqin nodded and said, Xianglan and Ban Wan are going to be sold by their grandmother, so I'm here to find Sister Wu to come up with a solution. However, Wan Shi was unaware of this matter. Although she was in the courtyard, Xiao's mother only said that she was looking for half a roll to help the main courtyard with work. This kind of thing had happened before, after all, no courtyard is short of manpower now. Wan Shi was busy with embroidery work in her hands, so she didn't ask much. P.S. Posting a new article. Lala, End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Methods. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Methods, Is There Not Enough Silver at Home? Ruan frowned. Since the foundation of the mansion was emptied two years ago, there has been a large dot-scale streamlining of servants, and the food has gradually become rough. Later, Madam Uncle even had the idea of a bride's dowry. But in the end, the conclusion is that each room is regularly consumed according to the number of people. In fact, except for the meals that are uniformly prepared by the main kitchen, all other expenses, including but not limited to clothing, monthly wages for servants, gifts, and reading and writing, are paid for by each room throughout the year. Although they are not separated, the difference is not far. Whether the money is enough or not is just a matter of my grandmother's words. If my grandmother says enough, it's enough. If she says not enough, it's definitely not enough. Gung Xingxuang was a bit upset. You child, what strange words are you saying? Wan Shi glanced at Gung Xingqin next to her. Gung Xingqin immediately agreed, and, I think Sister Wu is right. Gung Xingxuang is not worried that Gung Xingqin will come to his uncle's wife and say something, although Gung Xingqin is different from himself. Uncle's wife is her legitimate grandmother, but the two are not close. As early as two years ago, their eldest family had a quarrel with Lady Bo. Although the third family was Lady Bo's biological child, Jiang, the mother of Gung Xingqin, secretly joined forces with their eldest family to fight back in order not to be emptied of her dowry by Lady Xiao. In the end, they successfully achieved their goal. Now it seems that the scene from two years ago will be replayed again, but I don't know if half a volume and Xianglan are just preludes. Is there any bigger surprises waiting later, or is Xia only prepared to earn so much this time? Sister Wu, do you have a way to save half of the scroll? Then. Can you also save Xianglan by the way? Gung Xingxuang will definitely not let half of the roll be sold, and Gung Xingqin is very certain of this. That's natural, but saving people definitely costs money. Gung Xingxuang is not planning to directly intercept the person from the main courtyard. She originally had other arrangements for Ban Wan, but now she takes this opportunity to transfer Ban Jun's identity deed directly from Anping Uncle's mansion to her name. How much silver do you need? Gung Xingqin was careful, 
covering his wallet with both hands, afraid that Gung Xingxuang would say a value that she couldn't bear. It depends on how much silver my grandmother received from Mrs. Yu. Without waiting for Gung Xingqin to continue asking, Gung Xingxuang said to the Ruan family, Mother, I will leave the mansion now. By the way, you need to rest your eyes after embroidering for fifteen minutes. Jean John, please help me keep an eye on it. Jean John, sitting on the small stool next to Ruan Shi, was burying his head in embroidering a handkerchief. He only nodded when Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin came in. Don't worry, girl. I will definitely take good care of my wife and remind her to rest her eyes on time. And you yourself, don't forget that earning money is to live a good life. If you're not in good health, there's nowhere else to live a good life. Gung Xingxuang worked hard and felt that if she continued to be like this at such a young age, she would one day become a noisy old lady. She simply endured the weight that life could not bear. Ruan Shi and Jean Zhan nodded repeatedly, obedient and obedient. Don't worry, Xingxuang. Mom knows. Don't worry, girl. I'll save you a lot. Gung Xingxuang found it difficult to rest assured, but it's okay. She had already told Jean Bao that with Jean Bao around, they couldn't keep embroidering it. Gung Xingqin has been following Gung Xingxuang out of Anping uncle's mansion, which is why he couldn't help but ask. Sister Wu, won't we go to the main courtyard? I won't go. Where are we going then? Go. Ningdu Prefecture Yaman. Gung Xingxuang calculated in her heart that at this moment, her uncle should not have left the Yaman yet. Miss, the carriage is here. Gung Xingxuang looked towards the entrance of the alley and saw Li Dang driving a carriage clattering over. Draw a curtain, you're really amazing. Although Gung Xingqin knew that since Sister Wu obtained the approval of her uncle and aunt a year ago and found a way to earn money for the women in the uncle's mansion, it seemed that both Sister Wu herself and the people around her, the people around her aunt, and the people around her uncle had undergone significant changes. But this time she was surprised again. They were clearly not staying in the aunt's house for long, so the painting curtain not only went to the outer courtyard, but also made Li Deng quickly find a carriage to come over. Hua Meng smiled and said, Thank you very much for your praise, Miss Six. However, the most powerful one is still our girl. Well, Sister Wu is the most amazing. Well, did you two eat honey instead of mantu for breakfast today? This mouth is sweeter than each other. Here comes Li Deng. Let's get on the bus. By the way, Miss, you haven't had breakfast yet. Painted curtains always feel like they've overlooked one thing. It's just that they've been busy nagging all morning, and now they've remembered being teased by Gung Xingxuang. It's okay. When passing by Lao Zhang's lamb soup later, just buy a lamb pancake. Gung Xingxuang got on the carriage and casually said. Anyway, she was tired of the invariable breakfast in the mansion. In addition to manta porridge or manta porridge, she could not remember whether the last breakfast was meat buns two or three months ago. Thinking of the various breakfast shops hidden in the corners of the steel forest in her dream, oh, they were called breakfast shops. Among the small shops, there were all kinds of fried and cooked, either soft white, brown, or thick oil and red sauce, or fresh and smooth breakfast. She couldn't help but swallow her saliva, feeling even more hungry. Gung Xingqin couldn't help but swallow his saliva and said, Sister Wu, I also want to eat lamb patties. I'll buy it for you, as well as painting curtains and the lanterns, you all eat. It's just a few lamb patties, although money is tight now, Gung Xingxuang is not willing to cut a few patties. Two quarters of an hour later, Gung Xingqin not only had a full meal for himself, but also had Hua Yen wait outside the government office with a small basket of lamb cakes. Li Deng came forward and sent two cakes to the government office staff. Sir, could you please help me call out, Ruan Ban Tu, and say that his niece is looking for him. By the way, Ruan Ban Tu hasn't patrolled the streets yet, has he? Two officials neatly stuffed the lamb pancake into their arms, and upon hearing it, they knew it was from Mr. Zhang's house on Changning Street. 
Ruan Tu is in the Yaman, and it's not yet time to patrol the streets. I'll go in and report now. One of the Yaman runners ran in quickly. In no time, a middle-aged man dressed in a soap suit strode out. He was of medium stature and had a strong physique, appearing to be very powerful with every step, but giving a sense of lightness, indicating that he had some effort in his body. As soon as this person saw Gung Xingxuang waiting outside, his face immediately softened. Sister Shuang, why do you think of coming to see your uncle today? Is it your old lady? What did Madam Uncle do? Ruan Jin originally wanted to say if the old lady from Anping Uncle Mansion had become another demon, but when his gaze caught a glimpse of Gung Xingchen beside Gung Xingxuang, he forcefully pulled back the conversation, consciously trying to speak more tactfully. Admittedly, there is no euphemism anywhere. However, Gung Xingqin didn't listen either. Anyway, her grandmother didn't like the three of them, and she didn't like her grandmother either. Her love for protecting her family had already been worn down to the point where there was little left. P.S. The early bird catches the worm, the early written update has a collection, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Shop you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Shop Gung Xingxuang told his uncle about what happened in his uncle's mansion this morning. I already knew that the old witch was not a good thing. Wan Jin couldn't help but mutter in the end. Tell me, what do you want my uncle to do? Although Yu Yapo also does ordinary business, Madam Uncle specially invited her to uncle's mansion today. Naturally, she didn't just want to sell the three of them as maids to other wealthy families. I guess. Half Roll and the three of them are likely to fall into that filthy territory, so I asked Uncle to take someone to Lu Er Hut Ong and buy Half Roll and Xianglan. How much did Madam Uncle sell for? Uncle can add some silver money to buy them back, and then transfer the Half Roll's body deed to my name and the Xianglan body deed to Sister Six's name. It always takes some procedures for others to handle the deed of turning around, but for the constable squad leader, who is one of the three classes of the Ningdu prefecture Yaman, it is not really a big deal to transfer a servant's deed of identity. Okay, after I buy those two maids, I'll take them straight home and let your aunt take care of them. Whenever you have a place to accommodate them, just go pick them up. Wan Jin nodded without hesitation and glanced at the bamboo basket carried by the painting curtain. That cake is for me, right? Bring it. Hua Huan quickly handed the bamboo basket to Wan Jin. Wan Jin turned around and walked back, not forgetting to explain, I'll go find a few brothers. You hurry up and help yourself, pay attention to safety. If you encounter something difficult to handle, come and find your uncle or cousin. Although he is not good, he is always a man, and many things will be much easier to handle with his help. Before the words could be finished, the person had already entered the gate of the government office. The two of them, from meeting to parting, lasted for no more than a cup of tea, crispy and refreshing, leaving Gung Xingqin almost stunned. Let's go. Before Gung Xingqin could express his opinion, Gung Xingxuang had already turned and walked towards the carriage parked not far away. Sister Wu, will Uncle Ruan really help me rescue Xianglan too? After getting on the carriage and settling down, Gung Xingxuang first ordered Li Deng, who was driving, to go to Chaoxing Street, and then gave a reassuring pill to Gung Xingqin, who was still somewhat worried. Since my uncle has agreed, he will definitely be saved. Unless there is some force majeure, there should be an echo after lunch. Gung Xingqin was initially happy, but after thinking about it, she felt a bit embarrassed. She glanced at Gung Xingxuang and asked tentatively, Sister Wu, would you ask Uncle Ruan to turn the contract between Ban Wan and Xianglan? After the contract is transferred, will you let Ban Wan return to the mansion? Of course not. Finally, I reached the key point. Although Gung Xingxuang was not so worried about letting Xia know that she had bought the maid she had sold for a large price at the original price again, after all, this matter could be kept hidden for a while, but it is difficult to keep it hidden for a long time. But she still wants to keep it a secret for a while now, at least until the things she is currently busy with get back on track. 
So, Ban Wan will not appear in the mansion for the time being, so it is best not to return to Xianglan, who is in the same situation as Ban Wan. Sister Wu, do you want to keep half of the roll at Uncle Ruan's house? Can you also let Xianglan and half of the roll together? Don't worry, I will give Xianglan's chewing money, and I will slowly repay the money she needs to redeem her, as well as the money needed for the deed of turning around. The carriage was driving with a clattering sound. After finishing speaking, Gung Xingchen did not hear Gung Xingxuang's answer, only the various noises outside the carriage. Gung Xingchen felt a bit uncertain and felt that his demands were too high. Not only did he ask Sister Wu to advance the money, but she also had to take in Xianglan first. Moreover, the person who was temporarily taking in was not Sister Wu herself, but her uncle's family. If Sister Lu, didn't you ask me why I didn't save the submerged water? Gung Xingqin remained silent for a moment and said, I don't have any silver. I don't think you have much silver, Sister Wu. In fact, if I hadn't just heard what you and Uncle Wan said, and knew that my grandmother had brought Grandma Yu to sell them for a good price, the place she went to would definitely not be good. I don't necessarily want to redeem Xianglan. In our mansion. Xianglan follows me day and night to make needles and thread. If she is bought back by a wealthy family to work as a maid and earns a few hundred won or even one or two liang of monthly money, it would be good. She sighed and spoke in a low tone, it's just that I didn't expect my grandmother. Our family is short of silver, but... But it's not like that. As for sun water, we have three older sisters, uncle and uncle, and father, and only uncle is still an official. Third sister is also loved by second aunt. She is richer than us, and Sunwater has always been loyal to her. Fifth sister, we don't need to meddle in our affairs by catching mice. You are the dog. Gung Xingxuang glared at her angrily, but Gung Xingqin felt guilty and repeatedly begged for mercy. The sisters said they would go all the way. Half an hour later, the carriage stopped in front of a two-dot story building. Sister Wu, isn't this your shop? Gung Xingxuang nodded and said, let's go in and take a look. Gung Xingqin instinctively followed Gung Xingxuang inside, which was a room with a length of front, back, left, right, and short. Near the back door, there was a wooden staircase spiraling upwards, with a clever and unique design. The handrails on both sides of the staircase were specially treated, with various small and exquisite wooden frames, like separate treasure racks. There is also a small courtyard behind the small building, which has three main houses and two side rooms on each side. There is a laurel tree and a well in the courtyard. Gung Xingqin became more and more surprised as she looked at it. She opened her mouth several times and wanted to speak, but had to temporarily stop because she was led by Gung Xingxuang to see more scenes. She focused on looking at the various decorations in this shop and some novel objects that she had never seen before. After looking up and down, Gung Xingqin finally made a sound. Sister Wu, don't tell me, this is the shop you rented. She raised almost soul-like questions. Well, the rent is 260 taels per year. Do you think this street is not bustling enough, or is this shop too small? Without waiting for Gung Xingqin to express his opinion, Gung Xingxuang continued to explain, don't be fooled by the fact that Chaoxing Street is not as bustling as Changning Street, Qingyu Street, and Xianlang Street, but the foot traffic is not as high. Gung Xingxuang pulled Gung Xingqin to the door and pointed to the shops on both sides of the street, introducing him, look at this street, there are shops selling gold, silver, jade, jewelry, good restaurants and restaurants, as well as car and horse shops and inns. Look, there is also a medical clinic over there. As the saying goes, although the sparrow is small and has all five organs, there are also several large residential areas near Chaoxing Street, such as Xuangfu Hutong, Jinyue Hutong, Guixiang Hutong, and Xinghua Lane. Those residential areas are inhabited by wealthy families, at least small wealthy families. I have inspected them in advance, and business should not be too bad. At the worst, they can still be profitable. 
After a brief introduction by Gung Xingxuang, she waited for Gung Xingqin to give her some advice. However, she didn't wait for Gung Xingqin to speak. She was a bit puzzled. Perhaps Sixth Sister felt that her shop was not very good and had nothing to say. That's not possible, she's still counting on her to help herself. Gung Xingxuang was about to praise this shop from another perspective when he heard a somewhat floating voice from Gung Xingqin. Sister Wu, you are really rich. The rent is 260 taels per year, and their uncle's mansion pays their grandmother a monthly allowance of 20 taels of silver for each room. This means that each room receives 240 taels of rent per year. Even if it's her own grandmother, Gung Xingqin would say that her grandmother's money is too dishonest. The Fong had the least number of people and also suffered the most losses. She remembered two years ago, when her grandmother secretly demanded the dowries of three daughters-in-law, she joined forces with the three families of the Fong to fight and strive for each family to spend their own money. In fact, at that time, both the Fong and their three families could only be considered second best. They did not strive for the equal treatment they should receive in this family. Before, the big house was like the third house, and everyone was in a tight budget. Even though the dowry of the big aunt and her mother was saved, they have gone quite a bit in the past two years. I don't know how much longer they can hold on. Recently, she has heard her father and mother secretly discuss the issue of tight money, and even occasionally argue about it. But when did Sister Wu become so wealthy? Moreover, opening a shop is not only for the rent of these 260 tails, but also for the various decorations and ornaments inside, as well as the wages of the clothes, shoes, assistants, embroiderers, and garment makers that need to be shelved later. These are all expenses that need to be paid in advance before the business gets back on track. A portion of this money was given by my second brother, another portion was from Yan's sister, and the rest was from me. Gung Xingqin felt that Sister Wu seemed to be hiding something, but she didn't have time to delve deeper. Her heart and eyes were filled with this two-dot story shop. Sister Wu was so amazing, hmm. She was so envious. P.S. Start the day of moving bricks and make changes before moving them, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Mingshan Pavilion You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 4 Mingshan Pavilion Miss Yen Is Miss Chu from the Xinguo Mansion? Has she also joined the party? Well, Sister Yen thinks my business should be good, so she also joined in the fun. Gung Xingqin was somewhat envious. Her grandfather had already retired from the position of the fourth rank commander of the Southern Guard due to a serious injury to her right leg before her birth. The Count of Anping was beheaded as the fifth generation, and his grandfather was the fifth generation. Therefore, once her grandfather left, the plaque of Anping's mansion would be taken back, and Anping's mansion would also disappear from the history of Daining in the future. Fourteen years ago, during the Zhuanchang incident, my grandfather did not make significant contributions but had minor mistakes. At that time, the new emperor, who is the current emperor, remembered the achievements of the ancestors of the Gung family and did not immediately reclaim his title. However, when my grandfather resigned as the commander of the Southern Guard, he did not make any efforts to retain his title. According to his grandfather's rank at the time, it was possible for Enyan to have a son. Gung Xingqin had heard his father complain about this matter with his mother at home. Our Anping uncle mansion is conferred with martial arts titles, and my father is also a military official. My elder brother and I have been practicing martial arts diligently since childhood. We have been exposed to the wind, sun, snow, and frost, and have never complained about fatigue. My elder brother's physical condition is slightly inferior to mine, and his martial arts skills are also slightly inferior. However, compared to three days of fishing and two days of fishing and fishing, now this second brother, who is so old that he can't even stab his horse's feet, is much better. Even if I don't have the grace and shade quota, I am still convinced to choose him. After all, my eldest brother is the legitimate eldest son, and with his confidence what fell on his Gung Cheng, how virtuous and capable he was. 
My father was dissatisfied with my second uncle's official position, and my mother didn't like my second aunt always appearing as an official wife in front of her. In fact, she herself was also envious or even jealous of my third sister because my second uncle was an official. She often went out to banquets, either with my second uncle, or was invited to meet many young ladies from official families, and even many noble daughters. It's just that. She often pokes and pokes in front of her, don't think she can't see it just because she's not clear. Gung Xingqin originally thought that Sister Wu was just like him, not knowing many people, and not having many friends. When did Sister Wu become so familiar with Miss Chu? She also knew Zhu Yan, but it was just a chance encounter during a spring outing two years ago. Sister Lu, what about you? Do you think the business of Mingshan Pavilion will be good? Gung Xingqin nodded and said, I will definitely do it. Those six younger sisters. Should we join? Gung Xingxuang felt that the time was about. I, I can also. I don't have any silver. Gung Xingqin first felt happy, then shook his head in disappointment. Gung Xingxuang took Gung Xingqin's hand and sincerely said, Sixth sister, I brought you to Mingshan Pavilion today. What are you saying? Is it just to show off to you, or is it a suggestion that you can't do temporarily? Stimulate and stimulate you. Gung Xingqin turned his face slightly embarrassed. For a moment, she had really thought about it, but just for a moment, as soon as the thought appeared, she extinguished it. I know Sister Wu is not that kind of person. If Third Sister was still around, but these words rolled down Gung Xingqin's throat and he didn't say anything. Sister Lu, your skill in making shoes. Hmm. I should say that I have great confidence in your ability to design shoes. Every pair of shoes you make looks particularly beautiful, and each pair of shoes has its own unique effect when paired with different clothes. My idea is for you to make shoes with your own skills. Not only do you do it yourself, but you definitely can't do it so quickly alone. You can take your apprentices. Sister Yen has allocated a few female celebrities with good craftsmanship from the Zhengua Mansion servant, I have transferred my identity deed to Mingshan Pavilion. I am also preparing to recruit some more people. You can choose two to three people from them and you will specifically take them to make shoes this year, due to occasional dreams of high dot rise buildings falling into the clouds and neon lights flashing in the dark like day, Gung Xingxuang also went from the first fear and worry to the last calm and even learned many new things from that competitive and fast. Paced world, including but not limited to knowledge, concepts, patterns, and so on. Are you interested in craftsmanship? No, no, it's too much of a bargain for Sister Wu and Miss Chu. Gung Xingqin shook his head repeatedly. Gung Xingxuang saw her resolute attitude and didn't force her, but she still achieved the goal of bringing Gung Xingqin over today. Although Gung Xingqin did not agree to join the business of Mingshan Pavilion with his shoe-making skills, he not only promised to continue exclusive supply to Mingshan Pavilion, but also promised to bring disciples to Mingshan Pavilion, only receiving wages and training. Mingshan Pavilion mainly sells ready-to-wear clothes, shoes, and socks, along with some accessories such as pouches, sachets, handkerchiefs, silk flowers, etc. The rest are large embroidered items such as screens, curtains, and door curtains. If someone sells them on consignment, or if any embroidery lady is interested and has time to embroider good ones, they will naturally sell them. Gung Xingxuang has already found a full dot time garment maker and embroiderer for clothes, wallets, and other items. She is still outstanding in cutting and embroidering, but her best skill is to conceptualize and match styles and colors according to the time. Gung Xingxuang has had this ability since childhood. The clothes she wears by hand may only have an extra crease at the hem, which looks better than before. Moreover, she has excellent painting skills, and whenever she has a good idea in her mind, she can immediately draw it. So she is not only the chief shopkeeper of Mingshan Pavilion, but also a garment maker, embroiderer, and painter. However, she prefers the saying of that world that she is a designer and a pattern maker. But mom, I'm back at the mansion. 
when the craftsmen arrive in the afternoon, just make the changes as I just said. Before getting on the carriage, Gung Xingxuang instructed his mother and Jiang Ping, who had been sent out, that these two were the companions of her mother, the Ruan family, and were now in charge of the repair of the Mingshan Pavilion. She also has limited manpower. Although she has earned some silver money by consignment selling clothes, shoes, and socks in other ready-to-wear shops and embroidery workshops in the past two years, to support such a large shop, not only does it rely on silver, but also someone. Moreover, her silver is not so abundant, and now she has an additional sum of silver to redeem half a roll and Xianglan. Gung Xingxuang kept rolling with anger in her heart, staring at the imagined Xia Shi with almost a burst of fire in her eyes, but her face was calm and confident. Don't worry, girl. The old servant will take good care of them. Don't worry, girl. I will definitely let them repair it inch by inch according to the blueprint given by the girl. When the girl comes again next time, it should be completely repaired. Gung Xingxuang nodded and said, Mom, you and Jiang Ping are here. Don't compromise yourself on food. Gung Xingxuang, Gung Xingqin, and Hua Yuan had just boarded the carriage when they heard a soft female voice coming from outside. But Mom, is it Sister Shuang here? Upon hearing this sound, Gung Xingxuang felt happy in her heart. Without waiting for her mother to reply, she pulled open the car curtain and poked her head out of the car. Sister Su, are you at the clinic today? It's really you. My grandfather went on a clinic today, and my second brother called me to sit in. Are you here to see the shop? Gung Xingxuang nodded and said, Yes, I'll also bring my sixth sister over to take a look. At this moment, Gung Xingqin also poked his head out. Gung Xingxuang was about to rush back, but he didn't get off the car. So he helped the two of them get in and out of the car. Sixth sister, this is Sister Su from Yanian Hall. Her maiden name is Lianyang. The shopkeeper of Yanian Hall is Sister Su's grandfather. Sister Su, this is my sixth sister. You can call her Chin sister. When Gung Xingqin stood outside the Mingshang Pavilion store before, he saw the Yanian Hall, which was separated from the Mingshang Pavilion by two storefronts. The two of them saluted each other, and Gung Xingxuang said to Su Lianyang, Sister Su, there are some things at home today. My sixth sister and I will go back first and come over to play with you another day. Okay, my grandfather often has to go out for consultations these days, and I'm all at the clinic. Su Lianyang also heard her second brother say something before realizing that the master of Mingshang Pavilion had arrived, and then hurriedly came out to say hello. P.S. The female lead has a career, end of this chapter. Chapter 5 Hui Fu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Hui Fu, Sister Wu, is Sister Su a doctor. The carriage began to clatter towards Anping Uncle's mansion on Qingning Street, and Gung Xingqin asked curiously. Gung Xingxuang nodded and said, Don't be fooled by Sister Su's young age, but her medical skills are very good. When her grandfather went to see her, Brother Su called for her to come and see her. This is enough to show that Sister Su's medical skills are very good, and the people around here also recognize Sister Su's medical skills. It's not because Sister Su is young that they don't seek her medical treatment. She's so amazing. I used to think that only an old doctor with white hair and beard could be trusted, but now it seems like I'm too attractive. You are right to think so. The matter of seeking medical treatment requires both personal research and experience accumulation, as well as a lot of memorization knowledge. Sister Su is very early witted and has a family background, just like her she is rare. However, Sister Lu doesn't have to envy Sister Su. You're also very good. You're even younger than Sister Su, but few people can match your ability to make shoes with just one hand Gung Xingqin was a little embarrassed. I was forced by my mother when I was young. She asked me to learn needlework, but I was only interested in making shoes. So in order to fool my mother, she made shoes every day. My mother was very happy at first, but now she doesn't want me to touch shoes. 
she just wants me to cut clothes, embroider handbags, embroider handkerchiefs, and even want me to learn to make mantu in the big kitchen. So this time, Aunt San. It was all instigated by my second aunt nearby. She only talked to my mother about some things she didn't like when I followed Sister Wu to earn money. I've figured it out. If my mother stops me again, I'll say I'll earn my own dowry, and maybe even earn my fourth brother's dowry. Although Gung Xingqin had made some money with Gung Xingxuang before, she was too lazy to save money. Her mother, Jiang Shi, did not see real gold and silver from her. She also heard the words of her second aunt, Yao Shi, that she would know everything about girls and only make shoes, but other needless and cooks could not do anything. In the future, marriage talks will always be short of breath. In fact, in Gung Xingxuang's view, she felt that third auntie may not necessarily think that second auntie's words were right, but now only second uncle is in the official position in the family. In the future, when the girls in the family talk about marriage, they must rely on second uncle and second auntie, which is why she appeared to be a model in her words to second auntie. Gung Xingxuang took Gung Xingqin out for almost two hours, and when he returned to the uncle's mansion, it was almost noon. Six girls. As soon as she entered the mansion, Bai Ji welcomed her and said, Madam has been asking where you have been, I am very worried. Does my mother know that my grandmother is going to sell fragrant orchids? Xianglan, like Ban Wan, was called out by the servants of the main courtyard for help. Bai Ji nodded and said, I know, it was Sister Chiuya in the second wife's room who specifically went to say it. Gung Xingqin was a bit disappointed. So, if Aunt Air doesn't make people say it, my mother will still be kept in the dark. This was whispered by Gung Xingqin, neither Gung Xingxuang nor Bai Ji could say anything. Sister Five, I'll go back to Wudong Garden first. Looking at Gung Xingqin's drooping back, he drew a curtain and said, Miss, what do you think of Third Madam? Does she really want to rely on Second Master and Second Madam to help Fourth Young Master and Sixth Young Miss find a good marriage? The second house has not yet arranged a marriage with the eldest young master, the third girl, and the fourth girl. The eldest young master is already nineteen years old this year, and next year will be the year of weak coronation. It has been delayed until now, not because he wants to rise to fame in this autumn festival and take advantage of the opportunity to marry a high-dot-ranking legitimate daughter. There are also three girls and four girls. The third girl is the legitimate daughter, and this year she is still in her prime. The marriage has not been decided yet, and the fourth girl is a commoner, only one year away from the third girl. The matter of marriage is also urgent. So in terms of matchmaking, whether it's marrying a noble son dot in dot law or a noble daughter, the second wife herself is somewhat preoccupied, and relying solely on the official position of the second master with a sixth grade experience is obviously more than capable. The second room is already like this, and I can't figure out what third lady thinks when drawing curtains. Compared to the marriage between the fourth younger brother and the sixth younger sister, the third aunt is more worried about the days after the plaque of Anping uncle's mansion is taken back. After thinking for a moment, I felt that I understood the girl's meaning a bit, but I didn't think I understood her very well. Returning to Qingzue courtyard, the lunch of the master and servant had already been brought back by Jean Bao from the large kitchen. While drawing the curtain, he took the food out of the food box and roast, the food of twenty tails of silver in a month is rare. This is still the food of the masters. Apart from festivals, even the vegetables of the servants are a bowl of water with a few vegetable leaves floating on top. I'm missing your food. Gung Xingxuang retorted. Miss, naturally we didn't miss out on what we had to eat, but... Madam Uncle is also too extreme. After collecting so much silver, I don't know what to do. The painting of curtains was just for their mansion and was not worth it. After Uncle Yi was injured and stepped down as the commander of the Imperial Southern Guard, he directly passed over the eldest son, who was the legitimate eldest son, and gave the favor and shade to the second eldest son. This is not in accordance with the rules. In theory, if the mansion suffered such a big loss, it would have to be compensated in other aspects. 
But, the commotion is getting worse and worse now. Half a roll was sold. If it weren't for the silver in the girl's hand and the uncle working in the government office, half a roll wouldn't have fallen into some dirty place. The painting curtain couldn't help but feel a bit like a different kind of object, and I was even more worried that the things madam would do in the future would not be up to par. Not only were they, but also the girl. Although the girl was engaged, if her uncle was not in Ningdu in the future, the family wouldn't be able to help. I was afraid that madam would lose her mind and go crazy, calculating for her own benefit. These things happen every day in this Ningdu city, even if the girl is smart, there will always be times when she cannot defend herself. Drawing curtains, thinking so, Jean Bao came in. Did your mother rest at noon? Madam is asleep, while Sister Jean John is serving. Miss, Madam said that Sister Ban Wan will not come back, and I will follow her from now on. Jean Bao and Gung Xingxuan were thirteen years old in the same year. She was round and smooth, and looked like a soft white mantu, which could be needed by others. There was no sharp edge of Jean John and painted curtain. But Jean Bao was well versed in the skill of playing a pig and eating a tiger, and she had some martial arts skills, and could defeat two or three adult men who had not practiced martial arts. Her mother felt that after opening a shop, she would have to run outside frequently and it would be safer to have Jean Bao by her side. However, with the presence of her uncle and second wife at home, Gung Xingxuan also felt a bit uneasy about her mother and worried that she would suffer losses. There are still too few people, and I don't know if second brother has received the letter she wrote to him. Can you find two female bodyguards for her? I don't know how many months of silver it takes to hire a female escort as a guard. Manager Yuan and Manager Lu have helped her with the promotion, and I also don't know if Sister Yen has followed her advice and attended more gatherings to promote Mingshan Pavilion. Then you can follow me. By the way, how much silver did Madam Uncle accept? How did Sister Sen do it? Did Madam Uncle stop her? Regardless of whether they stopped or not, the outcome did not change. As soon as they entered the mansion, they knew that Xia Banjuan, Chen Shui, and Xianglan had been taken away by Grandma Yu. As for how much silver Madam took from Grandma Yu's hands, Gung Xingxuang still did not know. P.S. 10,000 Words End of this chapter Chapter 6 Second House Attitude you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Second House Attitude Sister Xianglan has 60 tales, Sister Banwan has 50 tales, and Shen Shui has 50 tales each. Jean Bao was not idle this morning, only running back and forth several times between the main courtyard and the Ingha courtyard where the second room lived. Due to the small number of servants in the uncle's mansion, everyone lives relatively concentrated, making it convenient to sweep around. It doesn't take much time to walk back and forth. Jean Bao has its own set of methods and will not arouse suspicion. Why does Xiang Lan need sixty tails? Is it because she looks better than half a roll and sunken water? I think that if it looks good, half a roll is the best among the three people. Because fragrant orchids are three years younger than half rolls and sunken water. Gung Xingxuang knows the reason behind this. Xianglan is 14 years old this year, and Ban Wan and Sui Shui are 17 years old. Did you gain 10 tails of silver when you were 3 years younger? Hua Meng was surprised. Gung Xingxuang smiled and said that 10 tails of silver were already very rare. If they were to be resold in the hands of Yuyapo, they might earn more than twice as much. Miss, Miss San has gone to the main courtyard, and Madame Air has also gone but she couldn't go back with the submerged water. Jean Bao is very distinct. Although she is older than her, the relationship between the third girl and her own girl is average. The second room always suppresses their big room, so she won't call her sister, submerged. Later, I went to the Ingha Academy to inquire and found out that the third girl really wanted to go back to the submerged water, but the second wife disagreed. The second wife should have known about this long ago. Gung Xingxuang was not surprised by this news. Although Madaman was greedy and had sold servants one by one, 
she still had the name of Madame and Ping on her head, and her face was still a little bit smug. She sold three pretty maids, Shi Jinxiu Yuan, Tiyu Yapo, and Min Jianren could tell at a glance what she was up to. If there is a pusher behind this, besides the younger sister Xiao Xia, the second wife Yao is the only one. However, recently Xiao Xia has not come to visit, and Zhu Mansion has not sent anyone to pay their respects. Xia has never left her home, and only Yao is in the mansion. However, from my servant's perspective, the third girl is not very angry. Did you see third sister? Jean Bao nodded and said, well, less than fifteen minutes after the girl and the sixth girl left the mansion, the third girl followed the second wife to the main courtyard and stayed there for about half an hour. When the third girl entered the main courtyard, her face looked a bit bad, but when she came out, she wasn't so angry anymore. Recently. Has Uncle Air made any moves? Gung Xingxuang pondered, what can I do with 110 tails of silver? And this price is also different from what she once heard, is it because the three of them, Half Roll, Sunken Water, and Xianglan, are not beautiful enough? Gung Xingxuang doesn't think so. Although they may not be considered top-dot-notch beauties, their appearance is quite good. If they go to places like that, the price is not very high. What's the difference? A flash of light flashed through Gung Xingxuang's mind as she stopped her chopsticks and focused on grasping the almost fleeting thought. Hua Fen and Jean Bao both knew the characteristic that their own girl would become entranced when she thought deeply about things, and did not disturb her, just waiting for her to come back to her senses on her own. Strange to say, the girl has never experienced such a situation in front of outsiders. All right, I'm full now. Draw curtains and tidy up the table, while Jean Bao continues to report the news he heard this morning. The girl guessed well. Xiao Wan said that Second Master has been in a good mood these days and has been going to Second Madam's house for two consecutive days. Xiao Wan is a maid in the second room and has a good relationship with Jean Bao. She usually exchanges some irrelevant information. Second Master Gung Cheng is the only official position of the Gung family today. Apart from uncle, he has the highest authority in the mansion. However, since her grandfather and Pingbo was injured and stepped down in the Zhuanchang incident 14 years ago, he gave his favor to his second son Gung Cheng. He only grew flowers and grass, raised birds and teased cats, and started a happy life of rest and contentment. Whether it was his son or grandchildren, he gave him filial piety. However, if he were to report, reason, or make decisions with his elderly family, he would only squint his eyes and pretend to be deaf. The only thing that can make my good uncle happy is promotion and wealth. From the perspective of Xia and Yao needing to sell maids to raise money, it seems impossible to make a fortune, and then the only option is promotion. Jean Bao, go see if Sister Six has had lunch yet. Let's go to the main courtyard. Jean Bao responded and was about to leave when he coincidentally met the master and servant of Gung Xingqin and Bai Ji who came in from outside the courtyard. Sister Wu, I have had lunch. What should we do now? Aunt San. Didn't say anything. Although Gung Xingxuang was happy that Gung Xingqin came back to her so quickly and easily, she was still somewhat surprised. My mother. Sigh. She's actually quite conflicted. Gung Xingqin frowned, looking worried and helpless. She felt that Uncle Air was the reliance of the entire uncle's mansion, and she couldn't help but back down to Aunt Air. But she also understood a little. With Uncle Air and Aunt Air's current actions, if it were her grandfather. He might not care about us. I went back and talked to her well, and she let me come. Sister Wu, please tell us what we should do next, and I will do whatever you say. Gung Xingxuang did not fully believe Gung Xingqin's words, nor did she completely distrust them. Aunt Jiang, the third aunt, was not only dissatisfied with the second house, but also dared not offend it. This was not only known to Gung Xingxuang, but also to the entire government. But if she had easily let Gung Xingqin lean towards their mansion, she wouldn't have been so conflicted in these years. Gung Xingqin didn't say anything, 
and Gung Xingxuang didn't ask any more. She stood up and said, let's go to the main courtyard. Now. Hmm. But now is the time for grandma's lunch break. Gung Xingxuang thought to herself that she should make a scene during her lunch break, otherwise her good grandmother really thought that after these two years of peaceful days, she could do whatever she wanted again. Grandmother received the silver today, and she must be in a good mood. When she gets excited, it's difficult for her to fall asleep. Well, Sister Wu's words make sense. Gung Xingqin deeply believed that she was like this herself. She was also very excited today. Of course, her excitement was different from that of her grandmother. Grandmother was happy because she received the silver, while she was both happy and unhappy. Fortunately, although her mother still prevented her from coming to find Sister Wu this time, her father seemed to be increasingly dissatisfied with Uncle Air and angry about his grandmother's favoritism. Therefore, he had an argument with his mother about it. Although her mother had a loud voice, once her father became angry and made up his mind, his mother would also make concessions. There is also the fourth younger brother. Today, he is resting at Qingxi Academy, and he is also at home. The fourth younger brother firmly stated that he will definitely pass the imperial examination and become a scholar with his strength in the future. He can stand up on his own without relying on a second wife, honor his ancestors, let his parents enjoy their later years, and be the support of his sisters in the family. Thinking of these, Gung Xingqin's mood was very good, but Xia Shi, after all, was her own grandmother. Surprisingly, she sold her personal maid to such a place for money. If such a thing were to spread although their reputation in Anping Uncle Mansion is just like that, do they still have to roll on the muddy ground by themselves? Gung Xingqin thought about walking, his footsteps getting heavier and heavier, with a thunderous aura of finding someone to settle accounts with. Gradually, he walked ahead of Gung Xingxuang. Miss Lu, are you here to greet me? Madam Uncle is resting at noon. The pomegranate guarding the courtyard door was dozing off, and Gung Xingqin went straight into the courtyard. She walked smoothly to the main entrance of the house, where Xiao's mother, who was serving her, heard the commotion and walked out, almost colliding with Gung Xingqin. P.S. Madam. Suffering from insomnia, end of this chapter. Chapter 7. Visiting Important Personnel. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Visiting Important Personnel Gung Xingqin's momentum was fierce, and at the moment he met Xiao's mother, he collapsed like a pufferfish with a punctured belly. She couldn't help but take a few steps back, wanting to turn back to find Gung Xingxuang, but felt that it was not good. She stiffened her neck and said stiffly, as if memorizing words, Mom Xiao, Xianlan has been called to the main courtyard for a whole morning. Has everything been done? There are still many things waiting for her in my room, why not let her go back first? If everything here is not finished yet, I will let her come tomorrow. She spoke at an extremely fast pace, and after speaking these words, she seemed to lack confidence from the beginning to exude a strong aura in the end. Xiao's mother was a bit surprised. Madam Uncle called the maids next to her three granddaughters in the morning. Although she used an excuse that the main courtyard had something to do for them, it was really just an excuse. After all, shouting people out for this reason would save a lot of trouble. But neither Madam Bo, nor myself and Mother Wu who followed Madam Bo's orders to do this, nor the two maids, L.V. Wu and L.V. Xian, had ever thought of hiding this matter because they knew it was impossible to hide it. But now, it seems that Miss Lu doesn't know if Xianglan was taken away by the grandmother, and instead runs over with a straight face to pick her up. Is Miss Six intentional? Or really don't know? Xiao's mother was thinking about it when she saw five girls following closely into the yard. This pomegranate should be tightly skinned now. The pomegranate head guarding the yard was still dozing off bit by bit. Gung Xingxuang walked smoothly through the courtyard door and walked in. This suddenly made Xiao's mother, who felt a bit uneasy, transform her anxiety into pomegranate's anger of neglecting her duties. She walked up to the pomegranate with a stern face, as if she hadn't seen Gung Xingxuang. 
She reached out and fiercely grabbed the pomegranate's round little face, cursing, You damn girl, I asked you to guard the door, but you're actually dozing off here. When I reported it to madam, don't you see? I kicked you out. She originally intended to let grandma you take it for sale, but when it came to her words, she changed her tone. What is mom doing? Are I and six sister thieves from somewhere, or is it that harmful thief that needs mom to be so guarded against? It was indeed her fault for Pomegranate to doze off while guarding the door, but at least our family is still in uncle's mansion. Mom is the steward mother next to uncle's wife. Can scolding servants be so rude? We can just see it. If my grandmother finds out, I'm afraid she will feel that my mother has lost her dignity and punish her. But then my fifth sister and I won't be able to plead for her the pomegranate was scolded and pulled by Chiao's mother, and the drowsiness had already flown somewhere. Mom Chiao, I didn't mean to, it was just last night. What's the noise outside? An old and stern voice came from the room, interrupting the pomegranate's explanation. Xiao's mother glared at the pomegranate and quickly walked to the door to report, Madam, it's Miss Five and Miss Six coming over. The room became quiet for a moment, and Gung Xingshuang slightly curled his lips. Her step-grandmother, after so many years, still had a tendency to avoid things in advance, even though she knew in her heart that no matter how she hid, she would still have to face it in the end. She did not urge, and neither did Gung Xingqin. Let them in. In less than half a cup of tea time, Xia's orders came from the room. When Gung Xingxuang entered, Xia Shi sat in front of the dressing table, with LV Wu helping her comb her hair, looking as if she had been awakened by them during lunch break. Miss Wu and Miss Lu, madam, it's not yet time for her lunch break. She's getting up now and will have a headache this afternoon. LV Wu looked worried and looked at Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin with a helpless expression. Actually, we're not looking for our grandmother. We know she takes a nap every day, how could she be so immature? We're looking for Mom Xiao and you, Wu Vu. Gung Xingxuang smiled brightly and said, but since my grandmother called us in, as granddaughters, we naturally have to comply. Gung Xingqin nodded repeatedly and said, my fifth sister and I were not planning to enter the house to disturb my grandmother. It's just that Xiao's mother is scolding and beating outside, which has disturbed my grandmother's peace. We can't really blame us. She was even more straightforward than Gung Xingxuang, and Xiao's mother, who followed them into the room, had an ugly face. She had clearly bumped into Gung Xingqin, who was about to enter, but at that time Gung Xingqin had not yet entered the room, and she was indeed speechless. LV Wu was speechless when she was scolded by Gung Xingxuang. Fortunately, she had neatly tied a simple round bun for Xia Shi, paused her hand slightly, and then inserted a simple style plum blossom silver hairpin into the bun, without any other accessories. Are you here for half a roll and fragrant orchids? Xia turned around and looked sharply at Gung Xingqin. Gung Xingqin's footsteps shifted, and her own grandmother couldn't help but want to step back. However, standing behind her was Bai Ji, and the master and servant were very close. If she stepped back like this, she would definitely bump into Bai Ji behind her. She finally held back and nodded under Xia's gaze. Yes. She was able to do so, which was beyond Gung Xingxuang's expectations. Grandmother, I wonder where Ban Wan and Xiang Lan are now. Gung Xingxuang knew that Xia Shi was deliberately ignoring her, but she didn't care about it. Over the years, Xia Shi has repeatedly done things that harm the big house and benefit the second house, and even deceived her father and mother into saving his parents and sending his second brother to the Litsai Academy by means that his father couldn't refuse. Since then, their family of four no longer cared so much about many things in this mansion. As long as it didn't harm their interests, they just watched the excitement. If it weren't for my grandfather still around, my father would have taken them to live alone. You don't know. Xia Shi didn't believe that Gung Xingxuang didn't know that half of the scroll had been sold by her. She had already felt that the big house was gradually losing control of her in the past two years, but she didn't have strong means to control them now. 
Eight years ago, when the eldest son of the wealthy family, Gung Shuhui, was about to go to Litsai Academy to study, she convinced her uncle to pay 500 taels of silver each to treat him for medicine, citing that he was seriously ill and needed money to buy good medicine. At that time, Gung Wen and Wan Shi were indeed deceived into using Gung Shuhui's maintenance fee because they didn't have so much cash in their hands. However, for some unknown reason, the matter was later exposed, and the big house learned that uncle was pretending to be sick. The silver money was actually handed over to the second house by Wan Shi to establish a relationship, which led to Gung Cheng's promotion from 7th grade to 6th grade experience. This almost drove the big house crazy, and Gung Shuhui left home directly and went to Suzhou, only returning once a year during the Chinese New Year. Later on, they didn't know how the big house operated. Before they even realized it, there were already rumors outside about how the big house could be filial. In order to treat uncle's illness, they misappropriated the eldest son's training. In the end, they found out that uncle was just an ordinary cold, spending only one or two silver coins. Since then, the reputation of Anping Bo Mansion in the outside world has been like Anping Bo's plaque, which may be removed from the door at any time. As an old lady, she has many opportunities to be a guest outside, but whenever she wants to explain, she is always stared at with a look of, we all understand, explanation is cover up, which makes her feel frustrated. So the harsh image of Xia's scheming for his stepson has remained to this day and has not been eradicated. The reputation of filial piety by the head of the Gung family also spread, which almost made Xia and Er Fang feel like a thorn in their throat. Er Fang's wife, Yao, tried her best to refute the rumors, but the effect was also very limited. However, and Pingbo himself seemed to feel guilty towards his eldest son. In the conflict between his wife and the eldest son, there was a tendency to lean towards the eldest son on the surface. However, Gung Xingxuang understood that this bias was not due to guilt, but purely due to financial gain. P.S. Gung Xingqin. Following Sister Wu is definitely right, end of this chapter. Chapter 8. Benefits. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Benefits Returning to my grandmother, my granddaughter and sixth sister heard some rumors both inside and outside the mansion, but they just felt that they were just rumors. What are you talking about? Outside the mansion. What kind of rumors have spread outside the mansion? Xia realized that she had done this secretly. The people in the mansion, including Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin in front of her, would not disclose this matter to the outside world. Therefore, this matter cannot be considered a secret in the mansion, but it cannot be disclosed to outsiders. Well, my sixth sister and I went out this morning and happened to hear someone say that Wang Yaren on Chiming Street and Yu Yaren in Luer Hut Ong had an argument. Yu Yaren proudly told Wang Yaren that she was here to grab business. This time, Anping Uncle Mansion took the initiative to find her and said that all the business in Anping Uncle Mansion would belong to her in the future. Gung Xingxuang paused for a moment before continuing to speak under Xia's face, which went from white to red and then from red to green, but I don't believe in Grandma Yu's words that much. I think she was just trying to show off her quick words, but she dared to attack our uncle's reputation for her own pleasure. Since her granddaughter knows about this, she naturally needs to report it to her grandmother and grandfather. You. Xia suddenly stood up. At this moment, she was both shocked and angry. She never expected that Grandma Yu had such a lack of oral ethics. She had clearly explained that this matter could not be spread, and not only did she speak it out herself, but she was also known by Gung Xingxuang. Gung Xingqin looked at Gung Xingxuang with a surprised expression on his face. When did Fifth Sister know this news? My granddaughter also knows that this kind of matter is not easy to manage in our family so she went to find her uncle. Uncle is best at handling this matter, grandmother, you can rest assured. Xia knew that Gung Xingxuang's uncle must be Ruan Jin, an illegitimate elder brother of the same mother as Ruan. She wanted to ask Ruan Jin how he would manage this matter, but felt that asking this was meaningless. Because this matter is already true, 
Deng Xingxuang should also know it is true. She even asked Wan to go in and find Grandma Yu. What is she trying to do? Ask Grandma Yu for someone. Even if Wan Jin is the head of the government office, she should not be able to forcibly snatch the girl she has already succeeded from Yu Yapo's hands. Wan Jin cannot go to ask for someone, and she herself cannot go back on her word. Moreover, if the matter really leaks out, it will be too late for her to go back on her word now. Call Yu Yapo over and scold her, not to mention that doing so is useless. Even if it works, she cannot do it temporarily because she still has something to do with Yu Yapa. Xia suddenly realized that she was in a dilemma. Grandmother, this. Can't be true, can it? It seemed that due to Xia's reaction, Gung Xingxuang realized that the situation was not as simple as she had imagined. She widened her eyes and looked incredulous. Gung Xingchen felt her arm lightly pinched by someone. She was startled and almost asked, but fortunately her reaction was not slow, showing a look of panic and doubt. Grandmother, where is Xianglan? There's still a lot of work waiting for her in my house. Please give her back to me first. As he spoke, he walked back and forth in the main room, looking around to find someone. Gung Xingxuang also followed. The sisters squatted down to look under Xia's bed, opened the curtain to look inside, and then opened the wardrobe door to search the wardrobe while searching, she loudly panicked and called out the names of Xianglan and Banwan, with a crying tone. Xia's veins jumped on her forehead, so angry that she pointed to the fact that they hadn't spoken for a while. Gung Xingxuang was actually a bit worried that Xia might be angry, but he was worried. He had to look for it, and Xia had to be angry. Xia's health was quite good. Although she was both shocked and angry, she was not knocked out by the anger. She was about to ask Xiao's mother to bring the daughter in law of Ruan and Jiang, and ask them to take Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingchen away. When she heard a little maid outside, she said, Madam, uncle has sent the maid over to ask what happened. It seems that he heard the fifth and sixth girls crying. Xia's face changed slightly, knowing that it was Gung Sun warning him that the old man, who usually pretended to be deaf and mute, now his ears were ringing. Since I have the body deeds of Wu Ya Tu, Lu Ya Tu, Xianglan, and Ban Wan, I can handle them as I please. I will take care of you Ya Po's talkative matter. All right, I'm tired too. You guys go back now. This is a direct admission. Gung Xingxuang had already guessed about Xia's actions. Two years ago, when each house first paid for the money, the servants who were supposed to stay in each house each paid their own money, which was considered as buying a body deed. As for their body deed, it has always been on your side, which is our respect for you as younger generations. Gung Xingxuang paused slightly before speaking slowly in Xia's increasingly sharp gaze, anything, when approaching success, cannot bear any risks. Even small things like a gentle breeze or withered leaves falling may not necessarily cause the resilient grass to fly wildly and the flat water to fluctuate rapidly. Gung Xingqin looked at Gung Xingxuang, although unsure, he felt sharp. She spoke low, the gentle breeze drags and flies wildly, the withered leaves fall and the water rushes. What do you want? Xia had to doubt whether Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin's sisters knew her plan. From today on, King Kuiyuan and Wutong Garden will be free of one year's money. The annual chewing money for two houses was nearly 500 taels, much higher than the value of half a roll and Xianglan. Gung Xingqin was surprised that Sister Wu dared to speak up loudly. He thought to himself, isn't Sister Wu asking for a sky-high price and sitting on the ground to repay the money? However, she felt happy in her heart. Her grandmother had gone too far this time. If it weren't for the help of the Ruan family uncle, Xianglan would have ended up. She felt uncomfortable thinking about it. Both Xianglan and Banwan have been with her and Sister Wu since childhood, spending more than ten years together day and night. Even if she is too poor to survive, she will not sell her to such a dirty place. Okay, I promise you, but... 
Xia spoke solemnly, intending to explain again not to put any thought into their second uncle's matter, but found that Gung Xingxuang had only said a few ambiguous words, and Gung Xingqin had only repeated Gung Xingxuang's words together. She was not sure if they knew what she was going to do or if they knew Gung Cheng's plan. All right, you guys go back. Xia's face softened and she waved at the two of them. Sister Wu, can I go to your room and rest for a while? Okay. Mother Chiao sent them out until the sisters disappeared at the gate. Madam, why did you agree to Miss Five and Miss Six? LV Wu was a bit puzzled by Madam's satisfaction this time. It should be noted that nearly 500 tails of silver were not a small amount for the current uncle's mansion and madam. Madam gave up so easily. Could it not be considered a warning just because of uncle's question? Because. She threatened me with her mistress's matter. LV Wu was even more puzzled. Five and six girls didn't mention the second master from beginning to end, but she secretly glanced at Xiaoxer's ugly face, but LV Wu didn't dare to ask again. Yuzan, go to the second room and pass on what Miss Wu and Miss Lu just said to Yao Xiaoxer. How dare Grandma Yu? Xia gritted her teeth and instructed. Xiao's mother answered yes and walked towards the Inha courtyard where the second room lived. As she turned around, she heard Xia's low self-talk. Five girls. It seems like the other side of the hibiscus hut hong. Xiao's mother didn't hear what was going on, but she had already guessed what Mrs. Uncle wanted to do. At this moment, Gung Xingqin was looking at Gung Xingxuang with a puzzled expression on her face. Although many people in Ningdu City knew about the business that Yu Yapo did, she dared not publicly announce which business she did. This kind of thing was done with a clear understanding. Is it irrational to argue with Wang Yaren? Gung Xingxuang curled her lips and said, if it were so easy for her to lose her sanity, she would blurt out everything she should and shouldn't say. How could she have managed to make the deal as it is now? Why did she? Gung Xingqin frowned, even more puzzled. That's because I said that. In the increasingly confused gaze of Gung Xingqin, Gung Xingxuang blinked at her and thought to herself, I think I should be able to handle this on my own today. When writing to Brother Qingma, you can also mention it to show off. P.S. Male Lead I only appeared in Chapter 8, it's just a name, end of this chapter. Chapter 9 Big Melon, 1 you are listening at NovelFull.Audio. Chapter 9 Big Melon, 1, Gung Xingqin didn't immediately realize the meaning behind Gung Xingxuang's words. However, when she connected what Gung Xingxuang had said in the main courtyard with the words she had just said, she suddenly understood. She opened her eyes wide and looked at Gung Xingxuang with shock and admiration in her eyes. Sister Wu, are you lying to your grandmother? It's not a scam either. Yuyapo and Wang Yaren did meet on Changning Street. They had a rift before, and Wang Yaren couldn't bear to see Yuyapo's insidious and immoral behavior. Yuyapo felt that Wang Yaren was meddling and pretending to be noble. When they met, they couldn't help but argue. The shop assistants who opened early saw it, but as for the content of their argument. Gung Xingxuang smiled and said, Even if Grandma Yu denies it, what can we do? Can grandma and uncle still send someone to ask those guys who heard them arguing? What if we go find Wang Yaren? Two years ago, their servants were sold through Wang Yaren. Although they were all sold outside of Ningdu, most of them were sold to wealthy families as servants, and a small portion were also sold to restaurants, tea shops, inns, and other places to work as servants. They have all found good places to go. Wang Yaren has a good reputation and has connections with many wealthy families in Ningdu, including the Gung family. They won't ask Wang Yaren, because no matter whether Yu Yapo tells him about the transaction with our mansion or not, Wang Yaren won't say anything. He only says some insignificant things to deal with the people sent by his grandmother and uncle, so it's meaningless not to find him. Gung Xingqin thought for a moment and found it very reasonable. Indeed, nowadays their Anping uncle mansion is gradually declining, 
and after their grandfather's hundred years, their entire family will have to move away from Qingming Street, which has gathered the family of hairpin tassels. However, no matter what, they still have a family with titles. Even if they don't have titles, with the shrewdness of Wang Yaren, he will only say things that are beneficial to himself. Sister Wu, have you already thought of saying that? Not really. After learning from Li Deng this morning that there was such an argument between Yu Yapo and Wang Yaren, I vaguely felt that there might be something I could draw from it. However, I didn't think about it in detail. Just now, when I was facing my uncle's wife, Xiao's mother, and even Luvu in the main courtyard, I naturally made the most appropriate response at that time. Gung Xingxuang saw that Gung Xingqin was asking seriously, and she also carefully thought about her own course of action before truthfully reporting it. Sister Wu, you're really amazing. Hmm. Under the increasingly admiring gaze of Gung Xingqin, Gung Xingxuang almost lost herself. Am I really amazing? Shouldn't Sister Six also mention this reaction in the letter? It's just amazing. In front of my grandmother, I couldn't say a single word of the words I had come up with before, just like when I had an argument with my fourth sister before. I was so angry that I couldn't say a word. Looking back later, I realized that I actually had a lot of things to refute her, to make her speechless, but it was already too late. The experience of falling off the chain at a critical moment has been experienced by Gung Xingqin several times, and every time he thinks of it, he beats his chest and feet. So today, I saw with my own eyes that Gung Xingxuang had calmly told such a rigorous and indestructible lie in front of her grandmother. How could she not admire her fifth sister and admire her immediate reaction? Sister Lu's performance today is also very good. Gung Xingxuang also affirmed Gung Xingqin's ability to hold on and not retreat at critical moments. Gung Xingqin recalled for a moment and felt that he had made progress today compared to before, and now he is feeling happy. If my mother knew that she wouldn't have to pay for chewing silver this year, she would definitely be happy. Although her mother is now swaying from side to side, the money she has earned is real. Even if she returned the sixty tails of silver that Sister Wu helped redeem Xianglan, she saved one hundred and eighty tails of silver when she arrived in the two rooms. Gung Xingqin happily calculated the small account for the third room, but Gung Xingxuang thought to herself, wondering if her uncle had heard more information from Yu Yapo. She didn't think Xia's goal was only for the one hundred and ten tails of silver. If that were the case, how could she easily agree to waive the one dot year lease on the third room? This transaction would be a huge loss for her. Her ambiguous threat was so useful to Madame, indicating that her step grandmother must have something more important. For that more important matter, she would rather lose nearly 500 tails of silver and choose to settle the situation. The two sisters thought about their own thoughts, but they were quiet for a while. At this moment, a figure passed by the side path, as there were several winter jasmine flowers separated from the path they were walking on, and Gung Xingxuang did not see them clearly. Miss, Miss Five, was that Miss Three who just ran over. Bai Ji, who was still following behind Gung Xingqin, recognized the figure. Is it third sister? Why does she leave so fast? Gung Xingqin was surprised. Although he couldn't see it clearly, the figure just now just flashed by. Gung Xingxuang turned around and happened to see a snow blue hem disappear at the corner of the main courtyard wall. Miss San is wearing a snow blue embroidered ink orchid pleated skirt today. Bai Ji once again confirmed the identity of the figure just now. Is third sister going to the main courtyard? Did she think about it and still feel that she couldn't let the sinking water be pushed into the fire pit like that? so she went to beg her grandmother. Gung Xingqin was using her imagination and she was very curious. Gung Xingxuang was also very curious. She found that her feet were a bit stiff, and there seemed to be nothing else going on. Even if there was something, it was not too urgent, or it could not be solved with just a little time saved. That's all, um, cough, sixth sister, would you like to learn more about how people communicate with each other? This time, we are observing the communication methods between grandparents and grandchildren. Gung Xingxuang asked seriously. 
Gung Xingqin nodded repeatedly, I really want to. Very good. Then. Let's go. When the sisters came to the front of the main courtyard again, Pomegranate was stretching its ears to listen to the movement in the main room. When she saw Gung Xingxuang and Gung Xingqin, she was puzzled. Miss Five, Miss Six, didn't you just leave? Oh, it's okay. We felt that staying indoors was too disappointing for the beautiful spring scenery, so we walked around and enjoyed the scenery. Gung Xingxuang was insincerely fabricating lies. Pomegranate nodded in agreement and said, I don't like to stay inside either. The sun shines on me warmly, and I find it most comfortable to doze off in the sun. Um. Miss Five, Miss Six, are you going in? I need to report it to you. Pomegranate breaks urgently, it's a close call, I almost spoke my mind. Forget it, we won't go in anymore. I just disturbed my grandmother's lunch break, so I dare not disturb her anymore. Madame Bo doesn't have a lunch break, even if she does, she won't be able to rest. Miss San just entered. Pomegranate pursed her lips. Previously, Xiao's mother had just claimed that she was neglecting her duties. When Miss San arrived just now, she didn't doze off at all and was about to go in to report. However, Miss San ignored her and rushed in. She quickly followed in, but was kicked out by Xiao's mother like a fly. Thinking of this, Pomegranate felt even more unhappy. At dinner, she had to say to her mother, no matter how powerful Xiao's mother is, when she meets her mother, she still wants to hold and coax her. P.S. Is there anyone like Gung Xingqin who, when arguing with others, runs out of words and leaves his mind blank? When he is alone, his mind is agile, his reaction is quick, and he can think of a hundred ways to criticize others. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Big Melon, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Big Melon, 2, Can You Hear It Here? Gung Xingqin leaned her ear close to the courtyard wall and listened carefully. She didn't know if the people inside were not speaking or if their voices were too low. Anyway, she didn't hear anything. You can't hear it, I can't hear it either. Hmm, Baiji probably can't hear it either. Sister Wu, you haven't even tried. Gung Xingqin felt a bit aggrieved and said, I can't hear you. What are we doing here? Just after receiving news from the pomegranate that Gung Xingbing had indeed entered the main house, they walked around to the west of the main courtyard under a ziwei tree, which was the closest location to the back window of the main house. Of course, this is what Gung Xingxuang said. Gung Xingqin has never done any eavesdropping before. Thinking of this, Gung Xingqin looked at Gung Xingxuang in surprise. Five sisters knew about this, didn't they? Gung Xingqin's thoughts were almost written on his face, and Gung Xingxuang couldn't help but understand. My ear power is not much better than yours, I can't hear, but someone can hear. Is it a painting curtain? Oh, where is the painting curtain? Gung Xingqin only then realized that the painting curtain that had been following Gung Xingxuang had disappeared. Miss, the painting curtain just left. As she was leaving the main courtyard gate, Bai Ji saw Wu Nyang give Hua Wan a glance, and Hua Wan quickly left. However, her own girl didn't say anything, so she naturally didn't dare to ask. Unexpectedly, the girl from my own family never noticed that Hua Fun had left. Bai Ji thought of the third wife's constant desire to marry the sixth girl into the Yongqing Ho mansion, and felt heavy in her heart. With such a simple and straightforward personality, if the sixth girl were to live in such a prestigious and deep mansion like the Yongqing Ho mansion, among a group of mother.in.law, sister.in.law, aunts, and children who all wished they had grown a hundred or ten hearts, Bai Ji couldn't imagine how her daughter would be bullied. Here we go. Jean Bao suddenly spoke up, and Bai Ji regained her senses. She instinctively looked at Gung Xingxuang, but didn't expect him to also look at her, with a deep meaning in his eyes. Bai Ji was slightly surprised in her heart, feeling that in this short moment, five girls seemed to have seen through her inner thoughts. Is it a treasure? Gung Xingqin reacted quickly this time. 
She knew that Jean Bao had a lot of strength, and perhaps her ears were also very useful. Jean Bao, come on, listen to what's going on inside. Gung Xingxuang waved to Jean Bao. Although Jean Bao looked round and round, he was agile in his movements and quickly rushed to the bottom of the Ziwei tree. She didn't even need to stick her ears to the courtyard wall like Gung Xingqin did, and she could hear the sound coming from the main room. Grandmother, my granddaughter has been thinking for a whole morning. It's really. She can't watch the submerged water fall into that situation, so. So. Can we let the submerged water come back? Jean Bao accurately recounted the words coming from the main room, and it was Gung Xingbing speaking. Miss San, have you told your mother about this? Jean Bao lowered his voice, his voice becoming old and deep. This was Xia Shi speaking. Grandmother, this is the silver I have saved for my private property. I heard that the value of sunken water is fifty tails, so these should be enough. Third sister is really rich. Gung Xingqin murmured softly, and suddenly she had a premonition that the unmarried young lady in this mansion had a high probability of being the poorest. Others may say they are poor, but they may not necessarily be poor. If she doesn't say she is poor, it is truly poor. Jean Bao, can't you hear me? Seeing that Jean Bao remained silent for a while, Gung Xingqin was puzzled. Jean Bao shook his head and said, No one is talking now. After a silence of about ten breaths, Jean Bao began to retell again. Miss San, you don't know why Madame raised the silver for. You have this silver, why didn't you take it out early? This is Chiao's mother questioning. As a servant it is not appropriate for Chiao's mother to do so, but if she is tacitly approved or even signaled by her uncle, she is solving problems for her master. Gung Xingbing knew that he would be doubted and questioned if he took out fifty tails of silver. But her mind was too confused. Tan's mother's words were like a thunderbolt splitting open her head. In an instant, her world shattered, and she almost thought that her ears were wrong or her brain was really bad. She could only see Tan's mother's mouth opening and closing in front of her, with a look of anxiety and fierce. She is completely different from the mother Tan who loved her so much before. But she persevered and listened to Tan's mother's words, and her chaotic mind gradually calmed down. She didn't know if what Tan's mother said was true, but she dared not and couldn't take the risk. So she must be rescued from the sinking, she must first stabilize Tan's mother, and as for the future, as long as she is given time, she can always solve it. How did third sister answer? Seeing that Jean Bao had not moved for a while, Gung Xingqin couldn't help but ask. Jean Bao. Woo 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 woo. Gung Xingqin was puzzled and looked at Gung Xingxuang with a hint of guilt. Did Jean Bao not hear what was inside just now? Her question shocked her and she even cried. Gung Xingxuang chuckled and said, it should be third sister crying. Jean Bao nodded and said, it was the third girl who cried but she's talking now. What did you say? Gung Xingxuang's eyes were bright and curious. Today, Gung Xingbing took the wrong medicine and even used the crying technique. Isn't she always the least interested in such petty behavior? Gung Xingqin felt that the bright light in Sister Wu's eyes was like. Like the sunlight in summer, scorching and she couldn't help but want to step back. Wu 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 Wu. I know. Grandmother is all for the sake of her father to go further, and father is for the sake of us children. I know that grandmother and granddaughter are not those who are ignorant and ungrateful, but but grandmother, the sinking water is. It is. Father's daughter, granddaughter's sister, and your own granddaughter. As for these fifty tails of silver, they are the pocket money given by grandmother every time she goes to her grandfather's house. Granddaughter knows that the family is not well dot off, so she has not been willing to spend it. It is also for emergency use. This time, she was prepared to take it out, but later found out that my little silver is not enough. Grandmother and I don't have enough. 
I also came up with a solution, so I temporarily pressed not to mention it Jean Bao almost verbally recounted Gong Xingbing's words in the main room. Whether it was Xia Xie and Xiao Mama inside, or Gong Xingxuang, Gong Xingqin, Bai Ji and others outside, they were all stunned by Gong Xingbing's words. What did third sister say? What are you saying? The voices of Gong Xingqin and Jean Bao sounded almost simultaneously. Of course, Jean Bao is retelling the words of Lady Xiao. Gong Xingxuang had a premonition that today Gong Xingbing might say something she didn't know but was very interested in, but she didn't expect this melon to be so big. She waved her hand, gesturing for Gong Xingqin to remain silent and continue listening. I said that silver is. Who asked you for money? Sinking water is the second seed of the second sun. Who told you this? Gung Xingbing couldn't tell from Xia's face whether she knew about it or not. She had to follow the words taught to her by Tan's mother and say, yes. Yan's mother said that when the family bought someone, Yan's mother knew that Qian Shui was her father's child, so even when she was only two years old at that time, she bought her. Yan Shi. How did she know? Who was born into the sinking water? When did she tell you this? Xia asked one question after another, and Gung Xingbing seemed to be confused by these questions. After a while, he replied, My granddaughter doesn't know how Yen Mama knew about this, who is the mother who sank in the water, and I don't know either. It wasn't Yen Mama who took the initiative to tell me, it was a conversation between Yen Mama and Lu Daju's family before. My granddaughter happened to pass by and accidentally heard it. Grandmother. When my granddaughter found out that she was going to be taken away by Grandma Yu after sinking into the water, I didn't dare to say that she had ulterior motives. She was afraid that her father would be biased and her mother would be sad, so she hesitated and didn't dare to say it. But. But this morning, my granddaughter was really uneasy and couldn't bear it. So. That's why. I still ask my granddaughter to prioritize her health and not be too angry. If my granddaughter is really angry, then. Just hit her granddaughter. Although Gung Xingxuang, Gung Xingqin, and others were unable to see the situation inside the room, they could still imagine the scene inside at this moment. Gung Xingbing had tears in his eyes, knelt down and extended his hands, indicating that he could be punished, Xia's face turned pale with iron, while Xiao's mother and servants such as L.V. Wu remained silent. P.S. The First Big Melon, End of this chapter